Good evening, everybody. I'm Lou Dobbs. New revelations that support accusations that Hillary Clinton should have known that she was acting irresponsibly as Secretary of State, even illegally when she used her private server for official government communications. It turns out that just one day after Mrs. Clinton became Secretary of State, she signed a document that acknowledges there would be criminal penalties for mishandling classified information. And so far, we know government watchdogs believe Clinton handled at least two classified emails over her private and unsecured server. We'll be talking with the reporter who broke that story, the Washington Free Beacon's Lachlan Markey, also tonight, President Obama rejecting the Keystone Pipeline, as expected, rejecting with it the thousands of jobs that would have come with it. This pipeline would neither be a silver bullet for the economy, as was promised by some, uh, nor the express lane to climate disaster proclaimed by others. We'll be talking with one of the Republicans blasting that decision. Presidential candidate Senator Rand Paul joins us tonight. And Politico putting out a hit piece against Dr. Ben Carson. In that piece, claiming Carson fabricated the story that he applied to and was admitted to West Point. The problem is, that isn't what Carson claimed. And now, Carson finds himself wondering how he got in the midst of a controversy over a school he chose not to attend. We take all of that up here tonight. Our top story, a potential setback for... Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, it appears tonight the former Secretary of State signed an agreement detailing criminal penalties for any unauthorized or negligent disclosure of classified information. And that's exactly what she's accused of doing with her private email server and State Department emails. Fox News senior political correspondent Mike Emanuel is live in Washington with the latest for us. Mike. Lou, good evening. The sensitive information non-disclosure agreement was signed by then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in January 2009, right, at, right after taking office. In the document, Clinton signed it says, quote, I've been advised that the unauthorized disclosure, unauthorized retention, or negligent handling of SCI, sensitive compartmented information by me, could cause irreparable injury to the United States to be used to advantage by a foreign nation. The agreement also says, quote, I understand that it is my responsibility to consult with appropriate management authorities in the department in order to ensure that I know whether information or material within my knowledge or control that I have reason to believe might be SCI. Clinton, the Democratic frontrunner for president, has faced months of questions about her handling of classified information, most recently in front of the Benghazi Select Committee during a marathon 11-hour session. A Clinton campaign official is pushing back, noting a Politico report out today saying the director of national intelligence has overruled the intelligence inspector general who had initially said two emails in Clinton's account contained top secret information. But there is some dispute on that point. At the State Department, spokesman John Kirby suggested the fight within the government over classification is not over. And as far as I know, we've received no uh, final decisions by the intelligence community with respect to these two emails. Uh, what, what hasn't changed is our view, and I've said this before. Congressional sources say the significance of this newly uncovered paperwork is it is a legal binding document and the person signing it has accepted the obligation to protect our national secrets. Meanwhile, the FBI continues its investigation into potential negligent handling of classified information. Lou? Well, Mike, this, uh, this story goes on, and uh, it seems each revelation is more damning of, uh, of the uh, former secretary's conduct uh, using a private email server. Uh, the State Department spokesman seemed to be putting forward a political argument rather than representing the State Department. Uh, give us your sense of what is happening there as one covering that department uh, in that city. We've been hearing from the beginning from the State Department that they didn't really think that these emails were as sensitive as the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. That's been a fight from the very beginning. The Intelligence Community's Inspector General said this was top secret stuff that was on her server. The State Department disagreed with that, and so it's been a back and forth, a food fight here in Washington, if you will. Uh, but bottom line is, folks I've talked to about this paperwork, it says, you know, that everybody in the government who handles that kind of information has to sign this document, and it tells you what's expected of you, how you're to treat sensitive information, and knowing that it is your responsibility to maintain it, to turn it over properly, 
and basically to store it. And so uh, bottom line depends on who you believe here in Washington these days, but uh, there are folks who think it's a very serious document that is out there that has been revealed mm -hmm. through this good reporting. And uh, bottom line, I think it's pretty serious that she signed it and her signature is on the paper. Mike, thank you very much as always. Mike yes, Emanuel. As I mentioned, the reporter who broke that story, Lachlan Markey, will be joining us here later in tonight's broadcast. Joining us now, one of the Republicans competing in the first Fox uh, Business presidential debate, uh, Senator Rand Paul, a member of several key Senate committees, including Foreign Relations, Homeland Security. Senator, it is great to have you with us, uh, and good evening. Let, let me turn first... Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, first to the developments that Mike Emanuel is reporting. Uh, and that is that uh, a signed document has been discovered uh, at the State Department in which the Secretary of State acknowledged her responsibility for the mishandling of classified uh, information, whether intentionally or negligently. Your thoughts? Well, I think without question, I think she knew that this was an improper thing to do. During her administration as Secretary of State, she actually relieved one of her ambassadors who did the same thing used a private email server to circumvent and go around government rules. The fact that she signed the document, sure, it indicates that you shouldn't sign documents that you don't read and that she should have known that she was obligated to be using a government server. But above and beyond that, it just goes to a question of judgment. If you're going to lead the country as commander in chief, you have to use good judgment. And was it good judgment uh, to safeguard our nation's secrets by putting it on a private server? I think it was a really, really serious lapse of judgment, and it really goes to character as to whether or not she ought to be considered as commander in chief. I, I want to turn to your most uh, recent legislative uh, actions before we turn to your, your candidacy and your campaign, and that is uh, seeking an audit from the Federal Reserve, seeking two. Uh, have the Federal Reserve banned, uh, prohibited from lobbying Congress. Uh, do you think that that will move forward? You know, what always really annoys me is that we give entities money, and then they use that money to lobby against reform. Now, the Federal Reserve doesn't actually get money from us, but it sort of creates money. It has the monopoly power to make money, and they make money, and they make a profit off of making money. But I don't think they should be able to allow to use some of that to come back and lobby against transparency. All I'm asking is that we should audit them, look at their books, and if they're bailing out foreign banks, shouldn't we be told which banks they're bailing out? Right. Yeah, it, it does seem, I, I have to agree with you, Senator, that it does seem uh, unnecessarily, if you will, uh, uh, arcane uh, for the Federal Reserve to insist that we divine what they're, the impact of those money flows are that they create and whether they end up in a foreign banking system or not. Uh, I, I want to turn now to uh, the campaign, as you might guess. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in Milwaukee, Wisconsin next week. Uh, your campaign, uh, your, your judgment as to where you are and where you intend to uh, prevail and break through to the lead. You know, I think some of our strength is underreported. We have a lot of uh, young people involved with our movement. Our, our best constituency is actually under 40 years of age, and particularly under 30 years of age. College kids, they don't show up in presidential polling. I've yet to meet a college kid that's ever answered a presidential poll. That's one of our strengths. Independence is another strength. And then the Liberty Wing of the Republican Party, a party that says, you know, the people in our party that say, you know what, we need to lower spending both for domestic spending and for military spending. You know, I, I, I'm smiling as you were talking about those young folks not showing up in polling. I, I haven't even met uh, folks in my age group who've ever responded to a presidential <laughs> poll. So we're, we're taking a lot on faith, aren't we? I, I, I want to turn to the debate uh, itself uh, and the degree to which you think it will be personal and the degree to which you think it will be substantive. Uh, I have a strong sense uh, from the standpoint of the uh, questioners and the moderators as to the sub substantive commitment. What do you think about the candidates? You know, uh, from the what I can guess of the moderators, I've interviewed with all of the moderators, and I think sure. we are going to have a good debate. From the candidate's point of view, I think we all want a little more uh, time to discuss some of the issues. And my understanding is the rules will allow for 90-second answers. Right. And you probably know this, but some people don't realize 90 seconds is a pretty long time in TV. An eternity. And so uh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I really want to have at least 90 seconds to say, 
what is my tax plan about? You know, what is my vision for the country? I think we're going to have more time in this with a few less candidates and a little bit longer answers. Well, I, and I think there is, and I'd like to get your sense of this, not to comment specifically on it, but you're certainly uh, invited to do so. But uh, Dr. Ben Carson being accused of fabricating a story by Politico when, in fact, uh, they're accusing him of denying, uh, uh, or, excuse me, let me get this right, of uh, confessing to, a, uh, to their charge, which, by the way, patently did not, uh, was not stated by uh, Dr. Carson. Uh, you're, is this, these hit pieces, are these hit pieces, you think, a sense of, uh, well, the beat picking up a bit in the campaigns? You know, I think it's sort of a tempest in a teapot. I remember, you know, see, I didn't finish college. I went directly to medical school after two and a half years, and I'm proud of the fact I worked very hard to get in early. Right. But I've had people accuse me of being dishonest about having a college degree oh, because sometimes that. in the discussion uh, I, of it, yeah, so it's the same kind of thing. He didn't even go to West Point, and I don't think he ever, uh, what he said sounds like he was confused about the process of whether you get scholarships uh, or not to West yeah, Point. Yeah, he, he only I'd went to it, Yale. I'd, I would give yeah. a... <laughs> Yeah, I would give a guy who's a Johns Hopkins neurosurgeon a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that he yeah. wasn't lying about getting into West Point, okay? So, um, I don't know. I tend to be a little more forgiving because I've been on the receiving end of uh, same kind of media hack jobs. Yeah, and, and as you say, a tempest and a, a teapot, this, uh, it's remarkable the controversies that are, uh, well, that seem spun up uh, from nowhere and amount to nothing. Senator Rand Paul, we thank you very much, and we wish you luck next week. Thank you, Lou. And please join us for the next Republican presidential debate, the fourth debate, right here on Fox Business Network. That comes to you Tuesday, November 10th. There are two debates, one at 7, one at 9 Eastern. We'll be broadcasting live from the debate site Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we begin that broadcast uh, Monday evening. 7 p.m. Eastern. Be with us. Jobs set to be a focus of that debate and Americans today getting a better than expected report on the labor market. The economy added 271,000 jobs in October and the unemployment rate fell to 5 percent. Hourly earnings up 2.5 percent from a year ago and that among the most important news in that report. Uh, unfortunately, there are a few negatives. The number of Americans working are actively looking for a job unchanged at 62.4 percent. And the reason for the decline in the unemployment rate, uh, principally the withdrawal of 300,000 people from the workforce. There's much more you can't afford not to know about our economy. So we're coming right back with all of that and much more. Stay with us. Dr. Ben Carson slams the mainstream liberal media over its questions about his autobiography. This is a bunch of lies. This is what it is. Is the liberal national media unfairly attacking Carson because he's a Republican? Lachlan Markey and Caitlin Huey Burns join us here next.